presentation tonight is to explain why Fort Hill ISD uh, thinks it's necessary to call for a tax ratification election, and then also just to provide some information as to what all that would entail. So, um, just looking at a history of uh, state funding of public education in Texas, since 2010, the state's reduced its funding to Texas public schools uh, to the tune of $6.5 billion, and that is with a B. When you look at uh, what's happened uh, since 2008, it was about a 50-50 partnership. So the, the state contributed 50% of what it cost to uh, fund public schools, while local taxpayers funded the other 50%. Uh, what's happened over time is that the state has uh, decreased its funding while the uh, local taxpayers have had to increase uh, to the tune that in 2019 it's projected that the state will be contributing uh, only 38% of what it costs to fund public schools in Texas. So what does that mean for Forgeville ISD? Uh, since 2008, it's meant a $3.6 million loss for Forgeville ISD. And that translates to $919 per student less that we're receiving now than we did in 2008. And so during that time, what we've done is we have tried to tighten up on budgets, uh, departments, campus um, uh, budgets, and then also decreasing staff very slightly. But uh, we do have fewer staff. When you look at student enrollment, though, you'll see that there's been a slight increase since 2000. Uh, 10 to 2018, we have uh, over 200 students enrolling. <coughs> Excuse me. So during this time, as a district, we have tried to stay focused on safety and security uh, for our staff and our students on campuses, as well as uh, departments across the district. Uh, we've also tried to uh, make sure that we're maintaining student programs that we have in place. And then um, also, we want to make sure that we're retaining, recruiting highly qualified teachers and staff members throughout the district. So, as we looked forward to next school year, we knew that there was no additional funding coming in from the state. And uh, we identified a TRE as an option that would generate an additional $1 million uh, for Floresville ISD at no cost to our local taxpayers. And so you might think, hmm, so how does that happen? So we have a, a brief video to show, uh, to explain it a little bit further. We'll provide some additional information and then be glad to ask, uh, answer any questions that you might have. The Floresville ISD trustees <coughs> is called a tax ratification election, or TRE, set for August 25th. This short video will explain what a TRE is and demonstrate its effect on Floresville ISD. The purpose of the tax ratification election is to ask the community to consider approving a tax rate to maximize state funding. If passed, the proposal would allow Floresville ISD to gain an estimated $1 million annually in state funding without increasing the total tax rate. How is this possible? The Floresville School District is primarily funded through local taxes and state funds. Local taxes are collected and go into two different funds, Maintenance and Operations, or m and and Interest in Sinking, or INS. The m and side pays for everyday district operations, including salaries, books, and building maintenance, while the INS side is similar to a mortgage and can only be used to pay the debt on school bonds. Bonds pay for new school construction and other capital improvements. The Board of Trustees has set the total tax rate at $1.575, $1.17 for m and and $0.405 for INS. You will see the total tax rate of $1.575 on the ballot. If voters approve the $1.575 total tax rate, our board by resolution has already approved reducing the INS tax rate by 13 cents from $0.405 to $0.275, rolling back our overall tax rate to $1.445. Voting yes for the TRE means exchanging 13 pennies from the INS side and moving them to the m and side. The result of this exchange means more state funding for Floresville ISD, and doing so will not affect our total tax rate. 
However, as we said before, the penny exchange will generate an estimated $1 million in additional state revenue annually. So what will the additional $1 million be used for? Since 2010, the state has reduced Floresville ISD's funding by $3.6 million. That's $919 per student and $20,221 for a classroom of 22 students. Simply stated, the money from the TRE will be used to offset this loss. Again, whether the tax ratification election passes or fails, there will be no increase to your district's total tax rate. If the TRE does not pass, the M&O tax rate will roll back to $1.04 and the INS tax rate will remain $0.405, resulting in a total tax rate of $1.445, the same rate we've had the past three years. However, if the election fails, the school district will receive no additional state funding. Our Board of Trustees has called the tax ratification election, but the voters are the ones who decide the outcome of the election. All eligible registered voters are encouraged to become informed and exercise their right to vote in this election. Early voting begins Wednesday, August 8th and continues through Tuesday, August 21st. Election day is Saturday, August 25th from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Voting locations and additional information can be found on the district website at www.fisd.us. So we want to make sure everybody knows where our, our information is located. Uh, so on our homepage under About Us, fourth line down is the tax ratification election. Uh, there you'll find a copy of our flyer, a copy of the video, copy of the order, uh, order in the election, uh, the ordinance setting the tax rate, and a copy of the resolution uh, that uh, rolls back the INS tax rate. <coughs> and we also have a frequently asked question on there that that one does change as we get additional questions. That's where that's all located. So uh, again, I uh, just want to reiterate that there's no impact to the tax rate. Really what we're doing, this is our current structure here. Uh, we're taking 13 pennies from the INS, moving them up to the MO, uh, ending up with the same uh, tax rate uh, with the uh, rollback on the INS. Doesn't mean your tax bill will not change. Again, the, the other equation to a tax bill is the value set by the appraisal district of your property and home. Uh, and so if your appraisal goes up at the same tax rate, uh, your, your tax bill could go up. So we want to make sure that we're, we're separating the two. Uh, the ballot will show a total tax rate of 1.575. That's language that's stipulated by the state. Uh, we cannot uh, put the 1.445 on there. We can't put any language that talks about the rollback on there. The language is stipulated uh, by the state on what we have to put. But that's why we did pass the swap resolution. Uh, again, if uh, the election is successful and the, uh, the 1.575 is approved by the voters, then automatically the uh, INS is rolled back 13 cents to 27 and a half cents, uh, and we end up with the same tax rate that uh, we currently have. So how does it generate more revenue? Again, the state has formulas for the m &O side. And they have some formulas for the INS side. And they're totally different. Uh, the, the, the penny on the INS side uh, raises about $130,000. Uh, if I take that same penny and I tax it on the M&O, which is a different formula, it generates $207,000, which is about 58% more. Uh, and so the one million extra comes, the, the difference between those two is 77000 so you take 77,000 times 13 pennies, that's a little over a million dollars. And so that's where we get the additional million dollars in funding on top of what we need to pay our bonds. Uh, and so that's the next question. Will we make our debt payment? And the question to the answer is yes. We're not changing our debt schedule. We're not changing uh, anything with our debt payments. Uh, we will still generate enough to make the debt payment plus the additional million dollars. 
So again, this is kind of tax rate comparison. Uh, Lavernia and Pleasanton most closely aligned with Floresville in size uh, and student population. And so uh, we're kind of right in the middle. Um, Southside has already done a TRE. Uh, Pleasanton actually is doing one the same day we are, uh, along with some other districts. Uh, historically, the, the district has really tried to bring taxes down as they can through refundings and increases in the To sum it up, no tax rate increase, uh, and then the Floresville SI, ISD would net an additional million dollars uh, on their maintenance and operations side. Uh, we did call the election in June. Early voting starts Wednesday, this Wednesday, August 8th through the 21st, and it's all taking place over at the county elections office on 4th Street here. Um, Election day is Saturday, August 25th. We'll actually be doing voting in this room, and then we'll be doing voting in the library at uh, North Elementary, uh, so people don't have to drive into Floresville from, from that side. And with that, Kim Duke's going to talk a little bit about the flyer and the frequent ask questions. Thank you. Hey, so this is just one of the articles that we have out on the website that you can refer to in may not have seen the presentation or if you'd like to go back and clarify some of the facts. So it starts out by talking about what is a TRE um, and what we're trying to do is swap the pennies. So you can get information there. Additionally, we have a good visual here that just shows the buckets. So we're moving the pennies from the INS bucket over to the MNO bucket. And again, the visual that um, we went over earlier where we're swapping the pennies from the INS and just moving them up to the MNO keep the total tax rate. So whether or not the election passes or fails, your tax rate will stay at 1.445. Goes down here to go on about how, um, why we're moving the pennies um, and the funding formula. So what can FISC do with the additional million dollars? We uh, list some things here. What are our priorities in the district? We have a great graph listed on the flyer that shows back in 2008, the the state was pitching them to 50%, and then over the course of the past 10 years, how that has dropped down to a projected 38% for the next year. We could go on to talk about the tax rate history, trying to show that we've been fiscally responsible and uh, refunding those bonds and um, lowering tax rates of the property values that have increased somewhat. We talk about some things that we have done to offset the uh, deficit from the state. And then we state down here, because uh, a lot of times people have never heard of a TRE, it is actually common. There are over 425 districts and counting in the state who have successfully passed TRE since 2010. We additionally have election day information. And then we move on to our FHU document. So I'm going to go over a couple of questions. Um, some of them are the more recent ones that uh, we've seen out on social media and in the newspaper and stuff. We're trying to address those questions as they arise. Um, we have the wording on the ballot so that people can look at it and, and understand that it will not show that we have adopted that resolution. Uh, and then, of course, the ordinance to set the tax rate, which would roll the, that uh, $1.575 back to $1.44. So we have the documents, the election order the ordinance, and the resolution, which all indicate that we will roll the INS tax rate back to 0.275 if this election passes. So is the additional $1 million that would be generated by approving the TRE a one-time increase to the district? The answer is no. We will continue to receive that additional $1 million each year as the state will continue to contribute that extra 58% for each of those 13 pennies on the MNO side. So I have a, an example down here. If you put $100 in a savings account and it earns 58%, you're going to earn $58 that year. Next year, you put $100 in a savings account, it can earn 58%, so you'll get that same $58 each year as you have that $100 to start with. Is the TRE the same concept as the Connolly Memorial Hospital rollback election? No. The difference between the hospital rollback and the school district TRE 
is a school district election is automatic if the tax rate is set above the rollback rate. For other entities, the election is only required if a certain number of registered voters sign a petition to hold an election, which was the case for the hospital last year. If there is no petition, then they do not have to hold an election. And here's one. Um, you guys may have seen an article in the paper recently talking about the client ISD TRE. So, is there a difference between the TRE that FISD is proposing and the one that Klein ISD voters rejected in June 2018? Yes, there is a difference. Klein ISD did not include a penny swap. They were trying to increase their overall tax rate. They were going out to just increase. <coughs> Excuse me. At the FISD board meeting in June, our school board approved the resolution to roll back the INS tax rate by those 13 pennies if the TRE passes, which will result in no increase to the overall rate for the FISD taxpayers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Will the board need to adopt the penny swap annually? No. The FISD school board voted to increase the tax rate to $1.575 by adding 13 pennies to the MNO. However, the resolution they adopted in June will automatically roll the INS 13 pennies. <clears throat> excuse me, roll back the INS 13 pennies if the TRE passes. The 13 pennies that were moved from the INS to the MNO as a result of the penny swap will remain in the MNO indefinitely or until the state changes its funding formula. Each year, those pennies will continue to generate more money than they would have on the INS side. Within the budget that is approved by the school board prior to each fiscal year, it will be noted that the excess monies generated by the MNO side will be used to cover the INS debt. The district is required by law to ensure that their debt payments are paid. <clears throat> so I, I guess what's confusing for me when I read it, and I know it's this all to bring me down, the ballot says 1.57. And you just had it on the slide where that's the way you have to word it, I guess. Yes. I, I, you know, I think for a lot of folks that's that's confusing. You know, uh, my district is going to a TRE. However, you know, it's because we're losing over 300 kids here. Which district? I, I don't, I don't want to say. That. Okay. I just, you know, uh, we're losing 300. We lost 600 last year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a big punch. You know, and, and I'm for it uh, where, where I'm at. Because that's a lot, you know, that's $1.8 million that you're going to lose in one year. You know, and it continues to grow. Uh, we don't have that problem under I don't believe so. I think you showed a slide that shows our ADA is getting bigger, 200 plus. Okay. My, my question is, if we don't do the, the TRE, will we have budget shortfalls? No, we will have a balanced budget. So, can you just explain? And I, I saw it on the briefing, but but it, it can confuse folks. And, and I think that's what we need to clarify. You're saying that it's going to be 1.45, but on the ballot it says 1.57. Now, is is the one you're doing is it different on the ballot? No, it, it, it's it's the same. It's, it's the same. same. Okay, same. Okay. So it's the finish swap. Yeah, I mean, uh, unfortunately, you know, the <coughs> state of Texas stipulates what has to be on the ballot. And that said, we can't change that. It is what it is. So, so when, you, when you go to 157, you're just going to roll back the. Yeah, I mean, basically, take it back to that's basically what the board has approved. It says uh, in the ordinance, the order, and the resolution says that if the voters approve the total tax rate of 1575 they will roll back the IRS tax rate to 27 and a half cents, so we end up with a tax rate of 1.4. I mean, that's, that's really what, what's in it. So, uh, but I mean, you know, I, w I wish it was easier to put on the ballot, but I don't have that authority. I don't think anybody at the state has that authority to tell me. Right. And I know there are some, just like I know South Sand <coughs> in the, the news uh, has been reporting it, like on that and, and Channel 4, that uh, they're holding a TRE as well, but theirs is a little bit different because they're not doing the penny swap. So their board did not pass a resolution <coughs> to roll back the INS at all. 
And so, uh, and so that's an example of where, uh, I mean, it doesn't matter if that's a district that you're at or not, but it's an example of how some theories are different than others in the, in the aspect But the effect. difference, my, one of my questions, I guess, are concerns, a dollar 57 on the ballot, okay? Anything on the ballot is permanent. That's legal, that's law, okay? The penny swap, which is totally separate from the election, that's a resolution established by the board that it's a resolution. It's a decision that the board made that they can change next year or the year after or the year after by passing another resolution. Yes or no? Actually, what ends up happening is, is we set the tax rate. Right. Uh, it's a capital payment. So what will happen next year is we will, we will come and we will set the tax rate to the board, and the board will have to approve the but they'll have to establish another resolution. There won't be another resolution. It's just part of the ordinance. Setting. Because if next year do you decide, okay, our tax rate, well, we're already at the one dollar fifty-seven, but well, no, we would be at one point four four five. If it was successful, we would be at one point four four five next year. Right? You, the one fifty-seven is what voters approved, but the resolution is what decreased it. Well, the, the resolution, the tax rate ordinance, actually the ordinance setting the tax rate, which is a written document. Correct. It has the language in the order, and the uh, the order calling the election, which is another of the documents. So, if it's successful, we will have a tax rate of one point four four five this year, a dollar seventeen on the note, and twenty seven and a half on the finance. I understand all that, but if it's not the successful, the resolution can be passed. Right. Okay, but let me on. So what will happen next year when we get ready to do our budget and everything, when we get our certified values and stuff, we will go in and our basis for the M and O will be a dollar seventeen, right? Mm -hmm. And our basis for the INS, again, if we're going to generate that money, should be twenty seven and a half cents. It may be a little less, but it should be twenty seven and a half cents unless our values drop. So when you keep in mind that INS is used to cover your bonded debt, and um, and so our bonded debt is not about to go up. I mean, we're not. If if we were to go out for another bond, our taxpayers would certainly have a voice in that. You would have to vote for us to have an additional bond. And so then the only other reason that we would have trouble funding our bonded debt, since we're not going to ask for additional bonded debt, would only be if our property values really took a dive. And, uh, and when you look historically over time, uh, our property values have either maintained or slowly increased. And, uh, and so th that would be the only two reasons that we would have to recommend to our board to go to increase the INS. But you're giving, you're giving, you're giving yourselves a cushion by taking, you're, you're having the voters approve it now. So if we approve it, then now the control is in your hands by resolution. You can determine, okay, you know what? This year we're going to have to swap those numbers again, do another penny swap, into, and there's no vote required for but that. We right? would never swap the pennies from. We would never swap the pennies. We're at a dollar seventeen by law. You cannot go any, any higher. higher, and we would be. I don't know why anybody would want to take pennies from the MNO side and put them on the INS because we know that they don't generate as much money as on that. So, so but the, but the there's end, no need to the ask INS for another can go up. You know, the, whole, the whole thing is the INS goes down. The INS money can't go anywhere. The INS money comes down, the M&O goes up, and then the M&O starts paying INS's debts. Yes. There's nothing that prevents the M&O, the INS, from going right back up to 44 cents, and the, the M&O to, to stop paying the INS's bills. Right. It's only in that resolution, which is specifically for 2018-19. There's nothing that commits the board beyond this year. That's right. And, and legally, there's nothing that can be. Right, so to say that, that it's perpetual or that it commits the board, it's well, not but, but if it, well, but if it's, it's, if it's was the pennies on the M&O side. M &O side. Only if it's, if it passes, the pennies can stay on the M&O side. Yeah, but the penny, swap, the, the penny swap question is about moving the pennies. If, without, if you don't move the pennies, if you leave the 13 cents on the M&O side, there is no penny swap. And that means there, it doesn't exist anymore. 
Right. Now it's just a straight TRE. So, so the, the answer is avoiding the question. The question we'll is... go back to the question? Is it's the question? in the TRE fact, right? It says, does it have to be renewed? If the, if the board next year, and, you know, and once the TRE passes, there's $1.4 million laying on the table, and all they have to do is pick it up. And, and so every year, the, 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 the Austin's going to pay a little less on that million dollars. So next year, say it's $800,000. And then the year after that, say it's $500,000. So your budget's getting squeezed. The M&O side is paying bills for the INS side, and there's 13 cents just laying there to be picked up. And all it takes is the board that year to go, you know what? We're going to move the INS side up to 44 cents, and we're going to take that part off, and now it's all nice and clean. It's just like it was last year. You know, the, the, way, the, the way the formula works, right? The, the, the penny swap will completely evaporate. So it's not permanent. It's not indefinite. It depends upon an action of the board every single year, or it goes away. The board has to set the tax rate every year, but they don't have to pass a resolution to swap the pennies every year. They have to approve setting an M&O tax rate of $1.17 and an IS tax rate of $1.17. Right, but as soon as they move it up, right. that is how the penny swap works, is that worth it? That was no, I understand, but there's no, there's no penny swap. It's just approving the tax rate, just like we would every year. And, and that's the action that the board has to take every year. But it gives them no that. matter whether we had a penny swap resolution or not, they have to set the tax rate. And in the past, it's been a dollar four. If the election passes, it would be a dollar seventeen. If the election doesn't pass, it would be a dollar four. So there's no promise that the following year or the year after that, or in future years, that that one dollar forty four cents will stay there because now you've given yourself that cushion up to one dollar fifty seven cents. There is no legal way for us to guarantee in writing to anybody what a future board can do. I mean, I, I just... Right, but that's that's what that essentially is doing, is we're approving it now for future use, basically. You're, you're approving it now to move it over to the MNO side. Well, no, we're approving the dollar fifty-seven now. Right. But that gives you, all, the board, the flexibility in future years to play with that number up to a dollar fifty-seven, which is what voters approve. It gives us the ability to set the INS, the MO tax rate is dollar seventeen. The INS tax rate is a calculated rate based upon my debt payment versus my appraised values. I, I, I wish it were a simple issue, but it's not. So we, I, I mean it's very you? it's very fun. Another question, you you were com comparing twenty ten to twenty eighteen. Quite a large gap, eight years. Yes. So, if we use those same parameters in 2010, what was the cost to educate students versus the cost to educate students per student, the per student rate, 2018? Actually, you have some good data on uh, the fact that it was in 2008 that really the economy. Yeah. When on a per pupil level funding. state website and see when they cut the five point whatever billion out of education that year when the economy kind of took the, the crash. Um, we have yet on a per pupil basis, the state of Texas has yet to come back and fund their portion to the same level that it was in 2008. But that doesn't answer my question. So what, what is what was the cost to educate one student in 20 2008 or 2010, and then what does that cost in 2018? I would, I would I'm say, just asking because those were the parameters right, you used in the slide, and you said you only mentioned what you were losing versus what it costs to actually educate the student. I'm going to say it's probably a little more expensive now, but I'm going to say it's all been on the burden of the local taxpayers. Right, that's true. I mean, I mean, unfortunately, that's the way the state is set up. I don't know those exact things, but we can look that up. Put that as an FAQ. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, I don't think anyone here is against what you you know, the things you put on the board, you know, of course, you know, student outcome is, is the first priority for any school district. You know, 
uh, get him the things that we need. So, so what are we, are we adding anything this year that we didn't have last year? That's that's you know what, what kind of programs when when you have on the board like you said raises and student student programs. Yes, sir. Are, are we adding student programs this we're, year? We're not we're not proposing to add any. We are supporting uh, 